20 behind it. Yeah. yeah. Gallium 68, Renium 180, and F18, and uh, Because of the Renium and Gallium is uh, produced by the uh, produced by the generator system, so that's why we uh, combine two uh, radioisotopes. Uh, these two radioisotopes is very cheap, cheaper than any other uh, radioisotope. So. Actually, I mentioned that the cost is also a very important factor. You can see here, uh, this is a technician uh, generator system. Also, also uh, we want to make a, a domestic uh, product of the gallium generator. We just now uh, try to make it. Uh, generator system is the uh, oldest one, any other uh, other radio uh, reactor or cyclotron. Uh, and then, in the year 1926, uh, they made a thorium generator uh, Brookhaven National Lab. After that, uh, they tried uh, biological uh, activity in, uh, because of the, that short half life. So, I think <coughs> optimal. Half life uh, is a uh, very important factor. And also, sh that should be inexpensive. Uh, did you see, have you ever seen the uh, inside of the generator? You may. <laughs> uh, very simple, just to shield and the color. And sometimes that uh, some kind of uh, filter system is put in there. So normally, uh, technician gener generator they use the alumina uh, solid phase, and also they load the uh, mother look like on the top of the column, and we can elute the solution, and then we can get the uh, daughter resin cloud. It's very simple, but it's uh, quite uh, heavy because of the that uh, lead shield or tungsten shield. Uh, <coughs> for a diagnostic purpose, we have uh, several kinds of uh, uh, system, but uh, technician molybdenum is the uh, best one. And also positron emitter we can get, gallium generator, and also rubidium generator, uh, mostly used one. And other therapeutics, we have uh, yttrium generator and also radium generator and also PC generator. I don't know why yttrium generator is uh, mostly uh, commercialized, but I think we could not get till now. Uh, I think uh, in-house made, maybe, in-house made, they cannot sell the, uh, this generator because of the, after illusion of the yttrium, then they can sell it to the, any other country like that. So that's a uh, more efficient way to get the uh, <coughs> As I emphasized that the uh, Renin 188 has a, uh, uh, Tungsten 188 has a 70 days half-life and also uh, Dalton Renin has seven, uh, 17 hours uh, half-life. So 
as I mentioned, that the four times of half life, you could get the 19% of the uh, activity. So that means uh, uh, two or three days after the first evolution, you can get 90% of the random activity. So weekly, you can look uh, two times in case of random one day. Okay. Uh, okay. I've already shown this slide. Uh, why gallium? Gallium has a 68 minutes uh, half life. Gallium 68, so, so you can remember properly. And also, they uh, uh, decay with the uh, positron. And this uh, 3D structure is uh, uh, crystallography structure. You show that uh, gallium is, uh, in case of Lota, gallium is just on the surface of the motor plane and then they covered with the uh, oxygen, three oxygens. So they can make a octahedral structure and also very stable. Even in a uh, uh, HNO3 solution, it, you never detach from the, this chelating uh, system. And also one more thing is the uh, German 68 has a 270 days uh, half life. So uh, normally we can use the uh, yearly, one year, one generate. It's very cheap. Okay. So you can uh, select uh, any other kinds of. Uh, this. You can select these types of uh, generators. So, so even uh, Dealer, they produce the fan grade. Uh, this is the RP grade, and the next one is the farm grade, that is the GMP uh, product, uh, product. And still, we use this uh, uh, generator for a research purpose, and sometimes uh, IgG100, that is the break, German breakthrough, is less than 0.001%. So <coughs> you can use uh, directly with the, uh, for a patient. And IBD and ITG also produce the, the, this is the German company, and this is the all, uh, from, from Netherlands. So just uh, you can compare that uh, price and uh, 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 just uh, you can consider that the price is enough for the selection. Uh, gallium is uh, decayed into the zinc, stable zinc. And also, the German can produce by the uh, cyclotron uh, with the uh, collision of the uh, proton to the gallium 69 or alpha to the, uh, to the uh, zinc 66. Uh, yesterday, as I mentioned, that the gallium is a hard uh, rich acid. So acid means they can get uh, electrons from the outside. So hard means they uh, love hard place, such as uh, oxygen is the uh, hardest one, the next one is sulfur, and last one is uh, amino. So uh, that uh, <coughs> ionic radii of the gallium is uh, uh, very small, that's, so they prefer small plating agent. And also they can Suggest that the uh, coordination number four or six, but uh, they prefer six, so they can make the uh, alternative <coughs> structure. Uh, this is the illusion profile from the gallium generator. You can get uh, less than three milliliter. <coughs> the total activity is inside of the uh, 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 0.1 molar hydrogen solution. Uh, since 2004, we, we just start using, uh, started using, uh, to use that uh, gallium generator system. That time, uh, because of the how many times we looted, that cost dramatically decreased. So last <coughs> one, uh, I think. Uh, uh, just before last one, we looked at 400, more than 400 times. Uh, so that cost is uh, 
four dollars, one millimeter four dollars. So if you inject into the uh, human, you have to uh, get uh, more than three millimeters. So that cost is around twelve dollars. Very cheap. Very cheap. And also, you have to consider that uh, this illusion profile, long-term illusion profile, you can get. Uh, uh, you can imagine that uh, German breakthrough. If that slope is here, you can see here like that. But uh, sometimes uh, other uh, generator system, uh, these uh, uh, generator systems are all from the Eckert Ziegler. Different generator system, they can produce. This drop, this kinds of drop. So that means uh, every illusion they uh, can uh, get the German breakthrough. So so you have to check the long term evaluation. This kinds of you have to get uh, this kinds of graph. It's better to safety. Uh, yes. Uh, in, in in the Gallium generator, they have uh, other methods. Especially Germany is the first one. Uh, Germany and iron is the first one, and zinc, aluminum, or uh, uh, less common uh, metal is a manganium, uh, lead, uh, titanium, or, or like that. But uh, after the labeling, there are several methods for uh, uh, removal of the other metals because of the uh, that metal can affect the uh, labeling efficiency. So. Uh, before labeling, they uh, have to remove the older uh, uh, metals. But in case of us, uh, okay, uh, they contain metal, but uh, uh, we add a more chelating agent, and then finally we can remove the older ready metal with the uh, alumina cartridge, alumina end cartridge. Then uh, more, I, I think almost all the uh, ready metal. Or the other metal is captured in the uh, alumina and cartridge. And after that, I think that is the earlier uh, uh, I will explain uh, experience that uh, <coughs> which kinds of uh, metal is competed with the diamond label. So here you can see the iron. Uh, Iron, copper, indium, or gallium, magnesium, calcium. We expect you expect that the gallium should be the major uh, component for uh, competing with the gallium labeling. But you can see here indium also. Also, copper is the uh, best one than the uh, gallium sixty-seven. So we expect that ah, copper can be labeled with the nota, ah, nota. So after that, uh, several years uh, after, uh, because of that time, they use normally DOTA for a gallium label. But uh, we try to make a DOTA will be the better chelating agent for gallium. Uh, yes, you can see here DOTA and NOTA here. And also already uh, published one uh, DOTA. Uh, we have to heat for gallium labeling in case of NOTA that room temperature labeling is possible. So NOTA is better than NOTA uh, for gallium labeling. Also, as I mentioned that the gallium NOTA complex, even in a uh, HNO3 solution, heating for uh, 100 degrees Celsius for three hours, there is no detachment from the uh, NOTA system. So very stable. Uh, and then we can look for a, a gallium labeled compound. Uh, first one is the gallium labeled Dota Tate or Dota Tor for uh, Sumatro statin analogs. And, uh, and also uh, IGD uh, compound we developed. And also another uh, example of the uh, melanoma targeting dimensive uh, channel like that. And the other thing is the uh, gallium labeled uh, myocardial imaging agent. Uh, and you asked me that uh, if 
the garlic label the HMTO is successful, then then you can get the big money. <laughs> because of the uh, they tried so many years, more than ten years, they uh, uh, could find the, the garlic label the uh, brain partition using agent, but still it's not successful. And also because of the gallium has a very short half life, such as 68 minutes, but uh, sometimes they use for uh, antibody labeling because of the antibody bodies, the long circulation time, also uh, localization should be take more than uh, three days or if, I think at least one day, but still they try. Also, uh, one more thing, we developed the uh, uh, monosylated human serum malignant they can detect the uh, Sentinel load or other nanoparticles that can be used for uh, initial uh, biodeception with the image with the gallium. <coughs> uh, first of all, earlier I, I tried to make the F18 version of RGB compound that uh, connect that F18 connected with uh, some kind of benzene ring like that. Uh, at the time, that compound is uh, has a uh, project that. Uh, High lipoplasticity, so that uh, compound goes into the liver after the uh, uh, in vivo injection. So we try to make uh, other hydrophilic one. So uh, Professor Jamie Zhang proposed that uh, okay, gallium nota is very uh, hydrophilic, so you can attach this uh, gallium nota to the algae compound, then you can get better results than the F18. So we propose this uh, uh, structure, and we could get the affinity study with the uh, almost same with the algae complex uh, compound, and also we could get the uh, tumor model image from anywhere, uh, and totally blocked with the old algae co-injection. And after that, uh, Professor Jamie Jung got his own image. Yeah, so uh, first of all, that compound is uh, ready to go to the kidney and uh, also uh, uh, it's fitted to the blood bladder. And after that, uh, as you know, that the Agastin is the uh, target for angiogenesis. So that target is almost the same with the algae. So we try to uh, confirm that, the, okay, RGD uptake is on, then Avastin should be work. So after uh, that uh, hypothesis, we try to get the image from the, uh, before the Avastin treatment, we uh, found that uh, high liver uptake, especially for uh, liver uh, cancer therapy, high uptake of the uh, LGD compound, and then uh, Avastin also worked. On the other hand, uh, not uptake one, that is non risk so, so we try to get the uh, uh, information from the, uh, this patient is good for this treatment or not. We can get the information from the gallium label, the algae compound. So we, we uh, readily uh, make the uh, gallium kit for, uh, algae uh, kit for gallium label and then we supply uh, uh, some other countries <coughs> and they try to make a, a, a clinical study. The next two one is the somatostatin another one that is the uh, Dota no Dota o or Dota to. Uh, finally, Gallium Dota to is listed in the uh, European Pharmacopoeia, so so we can use that is the uh, for a compounding for uh, uh, the in-house preparation. That is the neuroendocrine tumor targeting agent. You can see here, uh, dotato and dotatate has uh, some uh, different uh, distribution in the patient, but still uh, this is the uh, dotato is a major. Uh, compound and major radio pharmaceutical for uh, diagnostic for rotation or uh, dotate therapy. 
Next one is a, a MSH that is target for a melanoma. You can see here uh, there is no uptake except the tumor side. So I think uh, maybe nowadays Dota Tate and next generation will be the PSMA that for uh, prostate cancer targeting. Maybe next one will be the uh, melanoma targeting agent because of the you know that the, uh, the European or uh, US uh, has a huge uh, population of the melanoma patient. <coughs> and the other one is a bombation like uh, compound that is a GLP receptor targeting, and also they got uh, several uh, research images. Uh, in fact, we, we want to make a gallium labeled uh, myocardial imaging agent that we used for a PET. Uh, in the uh, year 1997-93, in a, one paper from the uh, German group, they uh, got they got uh, gallium imaging from uh, uh, from the maybe uh, dog, and also this is a comp compare region study for with the uh, uh, O15 water. So almost same. O15 water is the gold standard for uh, myocardial imaging agent, but uh, that image is very good. We try to make uh, uh, already known compound, uh, but. Uh, it's quite high uptake to the myocardium, but first extraction fraction is very low. So uh, Dr. Jae Sung Lee uh, could solve, uh, uh, wanted to solve, to solve the problem, but uh, still he cannot get. So maybe I, th I think I could maybe later <coughs> on we can try to make the. Set up the gallium button uh, path. Next one is the gallium NSA, that is the uh, gallium labeled uh, monoxylate the human sperm album. They can target the sentinel lip node imaging. Uh, you can see here, uh, after the injection, IV injection of the gallium NSA, you can see the high liver and uh, spleen uptake to get uh, activity from the uh, cooper cup cell uptake in the liver uh, tissue. So after injection of the foot pad of the gallium uh, NSA, you can see the uh, uh, readily increased that uh, uh, lymph node. Uh, next one is uh, uh, PSMA, gallium PMS, PSMA, and Ligand. I, as I mentioned, that the mutation version is already uh, uh, set uh, to the to the Bogatis. And first of all, they, that Heidelberg group, they want to make a gallium complex for uh, uh, this uh, glutamine and uh, urashin and uh, lysin group for uh, complexation of the gallium 68. They want to make a hydrophobic part. So they uh, use the uh, 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 these two benzene ring for increase amount of the hydrophobicity, uh, then they reduce the, the kidney excretion. They want to reduce the, the kidney excretion. So this is the PSMA 11. And next version, several, I think more than 100 uh, version is developed. And uh, finally, they could find that the, uh, PSMA 617 is uh, good for a uh, rotation label. And, and also, uh, this PSMA 11 is, uh, they couldn't get a uh, patent IP. So, so this PSMA, Gallium PSMA 11 will be uh, listed in a uh, European pharmacopoeia. Uh, I heard that story, uh, I think, three years ago. Still, it's not. Coming, but I, I heard I found in Google they uh, submit the monograph uh, uh, 
last year, last year. So, so I think sooner or later we could get PSM11 uh, uh, is listed in uh, uh, European pharmacopoeia then. Same with the uh, gallium dotato, we can use for uh, uh, compounding in every year. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned that the technetium generator, after the illusion of the technetium, they can be used for a patient directly. But in case of gallium, uh, they never use the gallium chloride. Uh, I think even gallium itself, you have to change the uh, gallium chloride. You have to add the citrate or gallium citrate image. So in, in USF, they, they said that the uh, gallium generator is not FDA approval product. Just to, they need a DNF5, drug master 5 is enough for a, a patient for a clinical use. So in, in European country, they, why I don't know, they uh, test through the EMA approval. So I think that, so that's why a European uh, company, they wants to uh, put the, uh, approve the generator in Korea also. So I never applied that thing. Uh, ne ne uh, I always replied, replied that, uh, that question to the European com uh, company that no, there is no approval uh, uh, procedure for a gallium generator, especially gallium generator. OK, I think we can do the gallium clinical imaging, then we can go to the learning <laughs> one. So from the study, you were curious to know whether we have any animal facilities working in this mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think of the synthesality here, mm -hmm. uh, it has some, do you have any idea? Like, uh, what's, the, what's the update of any facility? For patients? Not just the animal. Oh, oh animal. So, we do use uh, some uh, uh, crystal imaging for a typical, uh, I think, but not uh, you know, the other animal MRI. Mm. Yeah, so, yes. is it operating? No, no, no. Yeah, it is operating, So, what kind of, uh, what kind of animal? Mice. Yeah, no pet. Is there any plan to get the cat or spec? No, not yet. We can make. Or we can argue to get. What kind of experiments that will happen, right? What kind of experiments that I think some animal? Mm. I have been there, they are trying to uh, label them particles yes. like uh, iron with ceramic and uh, it's kind of heat. I thought I'm here to Okay, great. So we have to discuss about that then. Yeah. Is it summer or like yeah. Oh, it's yeah. it's just a uh, strike. Uh, uh, oh, really? Yes. Okay, that's great. It's okay, hello. My name is Min Kok Su, and I'm from Seoul National University. I'm a medical doctor, I'm a fellow right now. And before starting, I just want to advertise some kind of we are doing the YouTube streaming. So you can just Google the WFNMB portal and then you can find the Koika project menu and then there will be a uh, address for the YouTube streaming so you can find it. And please like subscribe, <laughs> but I declare I have no conflict of interest in this YouTube ID. So, so starting, as uh, you tell me, told this, we right now in our facility, we are doing gallium dotato uh, PET 
for imaging neuroendocrine tumors. And uh, somatostatin, as you know, is a neuropeptide, and it functions as like CNS trans neurotransmission or inhibition of uh, GHN thyrotropin release or inhibition of GI tract and pancreas function. And it has like five subtypes from one to five. And the somatostatin itself, as a native form, it has a very short half-life of two or three minutes. So if you want to use it as a drug, it is so short half-life. So they made up another type of somatostatin analog, which is octreotide. And it has a longer half-life of like 1.7 to 1.59 <laughs> hours. So these somatostatins go to the receptors. And the somatostatin receptors in the normal tissue has a high uptake in like kidneys, spleen, liver, or like adrenal gland, or hypothalamus. And also like tumors also express high uh, somatostatin receptors, and which these uh, special tumors are neuroendocrine tumors and like prostate cancers. So for these cancers, like the imaging agents such as dotatop, dotanop, or dotatate can be used for imaging these tumors. But as you know, dotatop is changed the phenylalanine to tyrosine, and it changed it because to make it to have a higher affinity. And dotatate also changed like this here. But as you know, the dotatop has been approved by the Korean FDA, so we are using the dotatop. But the dotatate has been approved in the America by the FDA, so the USA is using the dotatate. And there has been a large kind of study comparing side to side, but uh, the conclusion was that there was not significant difference between these two agents. So we have to now know what's the clinical impact of these uh, agents. And as you can see, this uh, was the comparison of dotatate PET-CT, which is the, like conventional indium octreotide spec, and anatomical imaging such as CT and MRI, and it shows that these dotatate PET-CT has a significantly higher sensitivity. So it can detect the disease lesions well, and also to find out whether it has like prognostication effect, they have done a prognosis study. And interestingly, it is quite logical that the lesion, the patient with higher dotatate uptake has a better uh, benefit in the survival. And this can be possible because these patients with higher dotatate uptake will get a better PRRT therapy response. But interestingly, regarding when we do the uh, multivariate analysis, so when adjusted the therapy, it also showed a significant benefit in the survival. So regardless of the therapy, like PRRT therapy, this whenever the patient have higher somatostatin receptor had a benefit in their survival. So it has a prognostic role. So right now in Korea it is FDA approved and our Ministry of Health and Welfare has an indication for this PET-CT agent for only like diagnosis and for metastasis recurrence and treatment response of neuroendocrine tumors. Before to uh, get the confusion, that is the not approved product, but uh, KFDA uh, uh, allowed to use that compound with the uh, just a uh, in-house compound. Okay, because of that compound is uh, list in, in a, uh, any pharmacopoeia, especially EP or USB or Japanese pharmacopoeia. Then that means that. Uh, that compound is also listed in the uh, Korean pharmacopoeia. Uh, so they thought like that. So that's why we can use for uh, compounding, in-house compounding with the Italian compound. 
And so for the acquisitions, like patient preparation, uh, actually there is no need for fasting. So, but we do like four hour fasting before the imaging and like those and image acquisition we do after 60 minute post injection. So this is the normal distribution of the docatal PET CT. And as you can see, as I told you, that there is like normal uptake in the hypothalamus, uh, pituitary gland, and like both adrenal gland and spleen, liver, and kidney show uh, docatal uptake. And to move on to the first case, as you can see, Quite light. So there is a mass in the pancreas head area. And as you can see in the Dota top image, you can just in the MIP image, you can see a very high intense uptake in the middle of the abdomen. And when you see the transaxial image, it also correlates with the mass with, which you have seen in the CT scans. So this patient came out to be a neuroendocrine tumor with grade one. The second case is a patient, 55 year old male patient who had a history of renal cell carcinoma. But at the follow up, he found out a, there was a high enhancing nodule here in the pancreatic head area. So the clinician wanted to know whether it was like a primary tumor of pancreas or a metastatic lesion from the renal cell carcinoma. But they have done the FTG PET because like renal cell carcinoma doesn't have high FTG uptakes, but the pancreas primary cancers do have like high FTG uptakes. So they have done the FTG PET, but there seemed to be no uh, intense uptake in the depicted areas. And the uh, opacity was done to exclude, uh, to exclude the neuroendocrine tumor. And as you can see, there is no, also there is no like uh, demonstrable dotato uptake in the pancreas head area. So this patient came out to be a, after the resection, it came out to be metastasis from the renal cell carcinomas. So these are very typical cases what we do. And the next one is a patient with a pancreatic head mass. And it shows quite an intense uptake in the head with a cystic change in the mass. So as we have described it or we diagnosed it as a, it could be a neuroendocrine tumor. So the patient got a surgery for this one. However, this patient came out to be a pancreatitis. And actually, interestingly, this dotato can be uptake by the macrophage this, because the macrophage also have a somatostatin receptor in their membranes. So the so interesting study was done in 2012 that because these macrophages can have like somatostatin uptake, they did a study using the uh, great vessels. So whether there is a high uptake, high dotate uptake in the great vessel, there will be a high uh, possibility of inflammation along the vessels. And if there is like inflammation in the vessels, it means there can be high risk of like cardiac risk or, so they divided the group into low risk and high risk groups. And they find out there was a significant difference in the clinical outcomes and clinical like history. So this patient, which had a galindotate uptake and the aorta, abdominal aorta, was a patient with cardiac events and also like kidney disease. So it can be also used as like inflammation, uh, so macrophage detecting agent. The next case is a typical case which has a high uptake in the pancreatic mass. And it was 
absolutely like grade one neuroendocrine tumor. But the next case, uh, which if the patient had a pancreatic head mass, but had like quite mild, <clears throat> mild hypermetabolism in the FDG, and just mild uptake in the dotato PET CT. So we just uh, reported it is less likely to be a neuroendocrine tumor. But eventually, the patient got a surgery, and it came out to be grade 3 neuroendocrine tumor with lymph node metastasis. This, as you can see from the case 4 and case 5, these uh, like neuroendocrine tumors have quite similar uh, characteristic as a thyroid cancer, as you know, because as the differentiation, the differentiation goes out, like whether the grade goes up, the dotato uptake is relatively going down, and like FDG uptake is going up. As in thyroid cancer, where the di differentiation goes, the thyroid up, the iodine uptake of the thyroid goes down, and like FDG can be more effective in that kind of cancer. So this, is, this has quite a similar characteristics. But this can be a problem when you deal with the gallium dotato PET as to use it as a response evaluation after the, after the therapy. As in this case, the, this was a male, 41-year-old male patient who had an abdominal NET with grade two and quite high KI-67 levels, and he had their, like, uh, the octreotide therapy, but had no response in it, so he got a lutetium dotatate therapy. But as you can see, this is the pre-therapy pre gallium dotato pet CT, and there is intense uptake all around the bodies, and also in the liver it is like, all the levers have like high uptake. But after the therapy, it shows no demonstrable uptake in the liver. So when you just see the MIP image, you, will, you can say it has a response in the therapy. But interestingly, if you see the CT scan, this was the previous scan, uh, pre-therapy, and this is the post-therapy liver CT. And actually, the liver lesions has grown much bigger. Uh, so like most liver lesions have grown much bigger after the therapy, which in by the definition of resist criteria, it's like definitely progression of disease. But by the uptake of somatostatin receptors, we cannot say it is really cured or, or has a response. So we think it might be due to the de differentiation, like after the therapy or after, after the progression of the disease, the de differentiation has come and then the, the total uptake can be, uh, can have been less uptake after the therapy. So it is hard to if use how it is hard to define how to use these dotato or like other imaging agents for the response evaluation. But not only for dotato PCT but like also the CT scan has like hard thing because it has like uh, although it has a pseudo-response also. So there has been a consensus meeting about how to uh, make, how to interpret and how to use the imaging biomarker in the neuroendocrine disease, neuroendocrine tumor disease management. But for the diagnostic perform, diagnostic, uh, they all, agreed with the use of gallium dotato is more useful in the diagnostic area. But for the therapeutic, there was, there was no like uh, consensus how to use it. So they have recommended like so many kind of like assessment tools, 
But right now, there is not a single uh, assessment tool, and we are not sure how to use this total PCT as a response evaluation tool. It's not yet uh, established. And the last case is actually it's not from our institute itself. It's from the other case report. The patient had a neuroendocrine tumor in the pancreas body area, but actually he had another uptake in the breast and axilla, axillary area. So this patient came out to be have an incident of breast cancer with high uh, somatostatin receptor and high dotato uptake. And this actually is from the TCGA data. And as you can imagine, there are many tumors that have like hot, and many tumors have different somatostatin receptor expression. As you can see, the first one, this is a pheochromocytoma, which is known to have a high somatostatin receptor uptake. And as it sure has a high uptake. But interestingly, like these breast cancers also have high uptake. So these kind of like not not more than like not only the neuroendocrine tumors, but also like other tumors with high somatostatin receptor uptake can be a other can have opportunities for PRRT therapy. And there are some ongoing studies for like gliomas or breast cancers to do the lutetium to therapy therapies. And I haven't not put it in the data, but interestingly, the triple negative breast cancers with high somatostatin receptors have very poor uh, survival, but these kind of group of patients can be uh, later on a candidate for PRRT. So for the summary, the somatostatin receptors are expressed on various tumors, but it's particularly in the neuroendocrine tumor. And also there are like other opportunities such as breast cancer or glioma, and GBM, and also this is the most effective target among. And the role of somatostatin receptor imaging is detection of lesion with high sensitivity, like the neuroendocrine tumor, heal, or paraganglioma has high uptake. However, you have to think about the differentiation and the inflammation, and it has a prognostic role, and it can be combined with PRT. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now I can solve the uh, curiosity of the why they uh, nobody they uh, uh, buy the up to four million dollar because of the that somatostatin receptor is all kinds of tumors. <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's move on to uh, second radio eye stop. Oh, we have uh, still the main three radio eye stop, but I think uh, within 30 minutes we can solve the problem. Okay, here we go. Yeah. As I mentioned, the radium 188 is the promising especially for the uh, cost. It's very cheap and uh, you can use just like a technician 99M in the your hospital. For one generator, you can use uh, more than six months because of the, uh, the mother retinal client has uh, more than uh, 70 days half-life. And also, uh, that has a very high, high uh, beta energy and also they, project, uh, they produce the uh, gamma uh, for uh, image. Uh, because of the, there are still, there are no commercially available product for uh, radium, uh, radio pharmaceuticals. So we, uh, I, I uh, opened the, uh, our uh, experience for the development of the uh, radium, radium pharmaceuticals. You can see here DTPA for the uh, kidney 
imaging agent, that because of the that uh, compound is highly hydrophilic, so right after the IV injection, that radiopharmaceutical directly go into the kidney and bladder. So uh, that's why we uh, used for a uh, therapy. After the the balloon is uh, uh, tear, and then that compound directly go into the bladder, uh, the urine. And then that DTK preparation method already uh, settled down in, in our uh, hospital. The next one we want to make a, a bone therapy agent. That is the, we call that the bone palliation agent. And we label it with the HDP for uh, labeling. And got the uh, uh, biodistribution study and then we could get the uh, mass image, and also we try to use uh, that compound for uh, patient bone palliation uh, treatment. Because of that time, uh, I think last course uh, uh, I, I mentioned that the Korean F S FDA established in uh, 1998, uh, and this uh, study was done in the 1999. So there is no act or there is no rule, but we know that the institutional uh, review board, I, we call the that is ILD, in the, in the hospital, they have. So we uh, try to make a, uh, uh, if, if we want to use this uh, radio hospital for a patient, and then that review board, uh, thoroughly review that uh, that is uh, good for a patient or not. So they decide to do, okay, you uh, can uh, use this radio pharmacy to a patient. And after uh, two years, uh, one uh, congressman uh, said that this is not approved by the FDA, Korean FDA, because of there is no rule and also there is no uh, uh, because of the, we already uh, done by the already exist rules that is uh, for uh, ILB permitted one. So, and after that, uh, we cannot use uh, any kinds of random compound for a clinical trial. But uh, you can see here there are uh, several uh, good results for a, uh, in a random compound. We try to make a random tincolloid for uh, uh, radiation synovectin for uh, this uh, synovium. So patient results is very good, uh, but still you cannot use that one. Also, random HDD is for uh, liver cancer therapy that liquid is mixed with uh, random HDD that uh, low alkyl chain can mix to, uh, very well in the liquid oil and uh, uh, keep stay in a uh, uh, liver tissue, liver uh, cancer tissue. So you can see here after the arterial injection uh, of uh, uh, that random ATD repair though, into the uh, rabbit, uh, that all the radioactivity is remained in the liver. And after that, we got the uh, uh, IAEA supported uh, multi-center trial for liver cancer therapy, except Korea, because of the as I mentioned, that, that, that Korean FDA never agree with the use of the, this kind of therapeutic agent. And that uh, treatment result is very good. Also, uh, that is a very uh, promising agent for uh, liver cancer therapy. Okay, this is the end of the random story. And also, we can move to the Okay. As I mentioned that the radium is a uh, very good potential, but still we, we have to uh, uh, solve that uh, chemistry part. So I think sooner or later we can open that easier process for uh, uh, any labeling, then I can share with you. 
Uh, next part will be the uh, F18 and C11 compound that if you install the cyclotron, then uh, definitely you can use freely for F18 or C11 various forms. Uh, F18 and C11 has a, uh, 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 is a positron R, the positron emitter, but the positron range has uh, different. Is a different. So F18 is a shorter uh, positron range than the C11, and you can imagine that uh, uh, resolution of the F18 is better than the C11 okay? because of the that range is shorter than C11. Uh, in case of C11, we can produce that uh, nitrogen with the collision of the uh, proton, then you can get the C11. And also, uh, uh, we can get uh, ammonia also in, in this uh, nuclear reaction, but ammonia has a, some uh, gaseous, uh, we can bubble, and then that ammonia will remove, and then we can use the uh, C11 capture method, and then we can use the C11 maybe. And after 18, normally we can uh, produce the uh, O18 uh, water. Uh, carbon is very important uh, element in, in for human, especially for human. And but the chemistry is very difficult than the any uh, just uh, than the F18 because of the that has uh, some kinds of. Uh, ambiguous uh, property because of it. it has a possessed that the negative charge or also positive charge also. So so normally in case of uh, uh, nuclear medicine uh, radio pharmacy they can use only for uh, uh, this kinds of uh, cation method because of the that methyl group is uh, uh, changed into the nucleophilic octet to take the cylinder compound. F18 is the uh, uh, F minus uh, anion form is uh, uh, stable form. So, uh, it, uh, as you know, the F uh, fluor fluoride has a highly negative uh, electron negativity. So, so that uh, fluoride anion always wants to get uh, hydrogen. So, it's the strong base. Okay, so before the nucleophilic uh, substitution, they uh, prefer to get the uh, hydrogen, then there, there is no nucleophilicity. They lose their nucleophilicity. So to maintain the uh, nucleophilicity, we have to use the, these kinds of uh, phase transfer catalysts such as uh, uh, ammonium, uh, tetraammonium, tetraammonium compound or uh, crown liter compound. Okay, and after uh, using this uh, uh, phase transfer catalyst, uh, and then we can get the uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction. Uh, for the C level labeling, that carbon uh, dioxide should be uh, uh, derivatized to the uh, methyl iodide or other uh, compound. We can simply uh, uh, bubble with the Green other reagents, and then we can get the C11 acetate for the specific liver cancer emission. You can see here there are two uh, different methods of the C11 label. One is a liquid type method, and uh, the other one is gas type method. Uh, normally, nowadays, uh, uh, so many uh, C11 uh, automatic synthesized module, they use the gaseous base uh, C11 label. And sometimes we can uh, use uh, the uh, metal triflate, and then uh, for metal iodide and labeling, we have to sometimes we have to heat with the metal triflate, just the room temperature reaction is occurred. Uh, in case of methyl ion and methionine, we can do the uh, 
metalide uh, substitution and uh, lacrophyte, you can get uh, methyl O triplate. Chemistry is uh, already known and very straightforward, so I can skip uh, so much. Uh, F18 laden method directly and indirect method. And uh, uh, normally, uh, nowadays, uh, F18, uh, FDG production from the Nucleophilic substitution using uh, these kinds of uh, cotton ammonium source. And uh, uh, earlier, uh, this is the uh, aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. And uh, the other one is uh, aromatic uh, fluid reaction uh, with uh, some good uh, withdrawing uh, uh, group. And other methods, uh, uh, yesterday, who asked that, uh, uh, that uh, why, why deuterium is used for uh, uh, that cyclotron, we, we can uh, use for a uh, uh, after gas method, uh, we, we should use that uh, deuterium. So, electrophilic substitution also uh, we can do the uh, efficient label. Uh, this is the this uh, reaction done by the uh, Tacho Hido. This is the first uh, FTG production in the year of 1978. Uh, the earlier that is the not the SN2 reaction, just the uh, aliphatic electrophilic fluorination of the uh, FTG precursor. And the other uh, fluorination also occurred. Or sometimes we can make a symptom to the other peptide or protein label. Uh, also, fluorobenzoyl or fluorobenzoic <coughs> acid or fluoroactive ester uh, is the can be used for the, uh, other peptide or protein. Uh, there are huge number of uh, C11 and 18 uh, compound uh, can be used. But FDA approved one, is the only one is the FDG. And uh, next one is the uh, beta amyloid using agent. So earlier, uh, FDG is the only one for FDA approved one. Uh, but but uh, here, uh, uh, 19, 1978, that invention of the FDG, F18 FDG, then they try to make uh, any kinds of brain imaging agent with the C11 or uh, F18, or sometimes they can uh, target for uh, tumor imaging, or sometimes they can target to the uh, myocardial imaging. Uh, here you can see that I think that this work is almost done by the Johns Hopkins uh, University, uh, Johns University of Johns Hopkins, and then they try to make a dopamine receptor and transport or serotonin or any other brain receptor imaging agent. So here you can see the uh, F-dopa and the uh, rap pride and the uh, CIT uh, compound, they can uh, show the dopaminergic system. And here you can see the dopamine uh, receptor imaging agent, you can see the uh, high uh, Typical uh, shape, and also the transport uh, that is made of the F18 or C11 CFT. Uh, this is the another rapid image from the literature, and also uh, no epileptic transport uh, imaging uh, for for. Uh, Patient and also uh, yeah, uh, that the uh, serotonin transport imaging agent DASP does uh, C11 is the one. Also, we we uh, uh, rolled it rolled it the 
as citalopram or a, I, I think that is the uh, S S yeah S S R I reuptake site uh, inhibitor. So we 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 calculated how much dose, how much drug should be proper to an individual patient. So we can calculate uh, from from this uh, kinetic data. And also, uh, MLR5 uh, uh, target for uh, ABP 688 level with the C level. Uh, maybe this is my image for uh, my brain. And C level beta family, that is a uh, peak lipoprotein targeting uh, imaging. So you can see here that, here that the uh, PGP is uh, always uh, located in the uh, BBB. So this also my region, my brain region. And fluvaginil uh, is targeted for a benzodiazepine receptor that is uh, good for the detection of uh, uh, epilepsy foresight. This is the Professor Jamin Jones uh, brain. Then, next to one uh, is the another big shot. So this is the uh, uh, beta amyloid imaging agent. Uh, I think I can skip the, the what is the amyloid beta plot. Uh, so uh, year of two thousand two, uh, one. Uh, Big compound of C11 PIBP uh, uh, can visualize that the uh, amyloid beta plaque in the, in living human. Earlier, there is no uh, data from uh, kind of like this. So, just uh, data from the post mortem study. Okay. So, uh, after that, so many radiochemists try to make a F18 version of. Uh, amyloid plaque imaging agents. So you can see here that the PIB imaging uh, compared to the F18 FDG. And next to one is the uh, FDDMP from uh, US, UCF SF. Then uh, uh, he, he, he make uh, uh, this kinds of compound FDDMP, then uh, they uh, propose that uh, that can uh, bind to the amyloid beta plug and also uh, tau protein. Uh, next step is the uh, targeting uh, for uh, uh, tau protein in the uh, Alzheimer's disease. They uh, in uh, Japanese group they uh, invent the C eleven PBB three that uh, special. Uh, brain in the in the special brain area, the high uptake the uptake is increased for uh, <coughs> with the uh, uh, disease course. Uh, also, we try to make uh, 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 this PBB three in our hospital, so we uh, we set up the, this imaging in our hospital. Uh, next one is the tumor imaging. Uh, that tumor imaging target for uh, metabolism or uh, uh, or other receptor imaging, but uh, as you know, the FDG and this is for a uh, uh, target for a glucose uh, analog and also amino acid is good for a uh, protein synthesis. And, uh, DNA also good for a uh, uh, tumor imaging and hypoxia can target for a uh, uh, less oxygen area in the tumor tissue. So, so many uh, radio pharmaceutical already uh, produced. Because this FTG is a uh, uh, FTG approved one, and methylene is the uh, USP listed one. And FLT, I don't know, F, F miso is also. Uh, 
USP listed one, so we can use uh, comp uh, in-house compounding with the, these two compounds. Uh, yeah. And other other target is the uh, angiogenesis or receptor imaging or uh, anti uh, cancer <coughs> agent to be directly labeled with the F18OC11. Uh, you can see here uh, there are no difference except two position of the hydroxyl is the substitute uh, with the F18. So you can see here uh, F FDG is trapped in the after the uh, uh, postpolation first post monopostulation and then they uh, stuck in the uh, tumor cell. So after that, we could get the FPG image with the cancer patient. And amino acid, uh, that is a silver metal in its famous one. So especially uh, FPG cannot be used for, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it can be used, but uh, uh, the background of the uh, brain, other uh, normal brain tissue is high. So, so sometimes a uh, brain, Two more we can use for uh, amino acid, silicon metal imaging, and visualize the uh, uh, brain tumor. And FLT or FMAU or silicon metal imaging can be used uh, for DNA synthesis imaging. You can see the almost same uh, strategy for uh, FDG that FLT can trap the uh, tumor cell. So we can see here FLT. Uh, in the uh, long side. In case of Korea, we have a uh, approved uh, FDA approved product for uh, FLT or especially for the lung cancer. Okay. Then other targeting agent is FMISO. Uh, that is the, the nitrogen group is uh, reduced with to the am amino group, but uh, without oxygen, there are trap. And, uh, amino, but with oxygen, that uh, reverse reaction is occurred. So, so that's why we can identify that hypoxic group or not. As you can see here, FD uptake same, but uh, uh, F miso uptake is different. So we can expect that uh, this F miso uptake is a uh, low oxygen. Grow area is uh, located in near to here, so that means a uh, uh, high radiation resistance or chemotherapy resistance because of there no there are no oxygen death, so that means that we cannot produce the uh, radical to treat the uh, tumor tissue. So after uh, get <coughs> this image, we have to increase the, the radiation dose, okay or uh, radiation dose. Okay. Next one is the angiogenesis target. As I mentioned, that the algae is the uh, uh, angiogenesis imaging agent. Uh, earlier version of the algae compound is F18 labeled one. Also, you can see here high uh, uptake in the ischemic muscle and also. Uh, brain tumor update. Yeah. Other uh, tumor receptor imaging agent, uh, uh, estrogen receptor F18 labeled one, and also androgen receptor here. FES uh, also listed in a uh, VSP. But uh, in case of Korea, uh, one company uh, got uh, uh, Korean FDA approval for. Recently, uh, for uh, FES. Uh, also, androgen uh, derivatives can be labeled with uh, K18. And also, uh, uh, F18 labeled Pacotaxel, that if that uh, uh, can show the uptake to the uh, uh, target disease tissue, then we can expect that uptake can be. Uh, <coughs> Or not. Okay. Uh, maybe last one, the heart imaging agent that 
FDG can be used for hacking uh, uh, region and also acetate or C level or F18 fatty acid. Or hot in, in the in the hot we can get the receptor imaging with the uh, uh, hydrox pedrin. Uh, so as I mentioned, that FDG can be used for glucose uh, metabolism imaging, uh, but I think uh, uh, ammonia and uh, water is a gold standard for uh, uh, micro imaging. Uh, sometimes we, I think that almost 20 years ago, fatty acid derivatives can be used for uh, 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 several groups uh, de develop the uh, fatty acid, including including our hospital. But still, uh, there is no uh, F18 level uh, fatty acid image agent for uh, myocardial. So uh, this is the C11 and F18, and I think maybe last thing I can list up the whole uh, compound uh, we can use in, in our hospital, and then we can discuss about that. Uh, how can you use in your hospital. Okay. So sometimes we could get the uh, uh, FDG, I think maybe you can purchase from the outside because of that FDG is approved by the uh, government authority. Oh, perhaps there is not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. Then I think we can discuss up. Like it is not disabled yet. Yeah, yeah, I see. That's better. All your same strategy in, in the world because of the US also, they never got the FDA approval, especially the FDG. But uh, I think uh, we got the FDA approval uh, year of 2001 or 2000. 2000. And then after that, uh, that strategy has changed. So I think the uh, last day we can discuss it. Thank you very much. Uh, um, last question yeah. first. Like, are you doing uh, F18 leveling of pacitexel in that SMH? Uh, we didn't do it. Just a uh, 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 yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, uh, it's a general question. Uh, perhaps it may not be much related to that. Uh, like, in recent days, here, Last year, last year we got uh, interest in nuclear neuroimaging. Mm -hmm. Like with help of IAA, we did several uh, HPOs, spent, 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 and uh, edit spent for our members. And we are uh, getting more interested about doing brain scan of autistic children. Mm -hmm. But uh, where, like, we are. We think that we have some gap of knowledge. It's like in which uh, direction we need to, like what we are supposed to see if we are going to be able to get more great spectrum structure, or maybe some sort of comparative study in brain scan of normal children. I think maybe. Dong Su Lee has <laughs> the experience that the FDG imaging with uh, some. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, mathematical uh, procedure, then they can uh, differentiate the normal and uh, autogen children. Is there a scope for us to see it? I think I can just explain. To you, uh, the answer will not be so simple. So, uh, tomorrow, in my, among my slides, I think you can just uh, already download from WFN portal. I have uploaded. And in one, uh, the last, last uh, the presentation, you might just find uh, the, as, uh, some kind of uh, analysis. Uh, the, so, the conclusion is not so simple, and you, have, you can download uh, my uh, recent review article, which is, will, be appear, will appear in uh, the February issue of the next, uh, the next year. 
of new payments supported by BGU. So in that, I might choose to refer to. And practically, in very simple uh, the, the answer, uh, no clinical benefit uh, by uh, the FDG PEP now. And also, in case of the brain spec, too. No. So there is no reason to do any PET or SPEC studies for neuropsychiatric diseases. You need to understand further. <coughs> and uh, then, uh, how do we use the brain spec? Brain spec itself is not helpful. So, however, brain spec with uh, the dimox acetylramide is really helpful for the carotid artery stenosis patients. So if your uh, colleague neurosurgeons are very good at, or at, at uh, endotectomy or the carotid artery bypass surgery, then you can do and you need to do. Uh, I don't think the MR profusion, profusion MRI is sufficient. So actually I just, uh, uh, that's also included in my presentation tomorrow. So, Ages to use on spectrum data. E so each yeah. this is Z school. So for each this spectrum. For each this spectrum. So uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm not going to follow the use of the ECD because ECD is representing <coughs> as well as perfusion the brain uh, metabolism of the esterase activity. So, which is going to complicate, uh, and also, uh, the, the interestingly, ECD was promoted by the ECD producing company, uh, the pharmaceutical company. What was that ECD? Which company is producing ECD? Yeah, so we do use the HMPO, we don't use ECD. So, I think kind of uh, in the opposition party, in that sense, okay, this is a Japanese move. Okay. Japanese, uh, the initiative is uh, 